Uh, really happy being here. <clears throat> Thank you for having these opportunities to talk about flying cars, which is um, my dream. I can now finally follow my dream developing flying cars. You all heard a lot about flying cars, I'm sure. It's nothing new to you. <clears throat> and um, I'm so happy to see here children and everybody from young to old, everybody is, is interested in flying cars. And let me ask you, who would like to have a flying car? Oh, wow, excellent, very good. Kids do? Okay. <laughs> will happen someday, don't worry. We are working on it. We are working on it now for decades and decades. It's a tough problem, uh, as I will try to explain to you in a few slides here. We do have a PowerPoint presentation. And what we will do, we'll uh, show you a few slides. And please feel free to interrupt me to ask any questions, because this should be more or less a roundtable discussion, not just presenting something. And then after that, we'll show you several videos of all kinds of different flying cars. So if you're OK with that, then let's uh, start looking at this PowerPoint presentation. <clears throat> now, why flying cars? The real reason to use a flying car is to save travel time. Why are we using today airplanes? To save travel time. We are still driving long distances with cars, but if you don't have too much time to travel, let's say, 1,000 or 2,000 miles, you will use airplanes. Now, on short distances, of course, you will use always a car. And this uh, chart shows how many million miles are we traveling uh, going distances below 150 miles, which is, let's say, from 10 to 150. And then you see if you have to go 500 miles or more, then you will not use a car, which goes along this blue line, but you will start using more and more airplanes. I would say after, let's say, 500,000 miles, it really makes sense to use airplanes to fly because you should shorten your flying time. Now, there are all kinds of flying cars being developed in the past. This idea is 100 years old, started with scooters, and uh, uh, there are so many different configurations here, and few of those we will show you later in small video uh, clips, uh, and one will be Mold Taylor, which is more or less the father of flying cars, and then Terrafugia, which are kids in uh, Boston starting developing a flying car. This is my configuration, we'll talk about that. This is Paul uh, Mola, and so on. Now, here are a few historic flying car developments. This one is very interesting uh, from Convair. As you can see, this was really a car, and guys did attach flight components to it with a aviation engine, and then you could fly. However, you will have to leave flight components at the airport, and you could draw away, and you have to go to the same airport, so reattach wings, and you could fly. This here is Warnick, Mr. Warnick in Texas. He did build a full-scale prototype, mock-up prototype, to show how could short-wing flying car work. There are a few other examples. This is one from Fulton. Uh, this one is very interesting because it's from Maud Taylor. He proposed then at the end to use a Honda small car, attach flight components to it and fly. All kinds of configuration. And this is Maud Taylor's flying car in Seattle in museum. As you can see, quite an interesting aerodynamically formed uh, car component. And you are attaching wings and tail and you can fly. And uh, this shows his prototype, which was uh, flying uh, for many years. <coughs> and Ed Sweeney bought, uh, did buy one of those flying cars. <coughs> and many years ago, as Oscar said, I'm organizing engineering sessions on flying cars for SAE. And many years ago, I did ask Ed Sweeney to bring his uh, uh, flying car to join the airport and for demonstration. <coughs> we demonstrated this at the airport. And then uh, <clears throat> one day before the demonstration, I said to Ed, just bring it. We will have to dry around to see how does this work. 
And then uh, we went to the airport and it uh, took him almost one hour to assemble wings and use it to it. We had a um, live demonstration, flight demonstration, and uh, it really showed that uh, practicality is really not very great. This is more Taylor, by the way. <laughs> These uh, are his uh, renderings, uh, let's say, having a flying car flying, and here, towing. You see wings and tail section behind the car on the street. It's nice innovation, great stuff, great pioneering, but as you can see, it not, was not very practical. And you, you can see he did uh, design front engine, pusher propeller, drive, and uh, he had also drive, uh, drive to front wheels. Now, Ed Sweeney, who did buy one of those small tailors flying cars, developed his own concept, similar to small tailors. Uh, let's go back. Uh, same configuration flight components with wing attached to a conventional sports car. This is Paul Moller's vertical takeoff um, aero car 400 for vertical takeoff. Yeah, he does have four engines, as you can see now here, you see. There are four in the two engines in the front and two in the back. And uh, the complete description here shows that he was proposing um, to fly at uh, 300 miles per hour, vertical takeoff was possible, and uh, I didn't have this yet. Um, and he did build a prototype and was able to demonstrate vertical takeoff. This one is most interesting one is Terrafugia. Three MIT students years ago decided to develop this roadable airplane. As you can see, these are folded wings canard in the front, and then you put the drive on the street at uh, limited velocities, of course. Very nice configuration, a roadable airplane, and this is the only a configuration where you can take everything with you on the street so that you can take off from any airport uh, uh, whenever uh, needed. This is a team, Terrafugia team, uh, building this uh, uh, flying uh, a roadable airplane, and uh, they started development uh, six years ago. As far as cost goes, in the beginning they proposed to sell it for 100,000 bucks, but with um, a further development and certification, which is very expensive, today's price will be about $600,000, which is maybe not a very good price for such a vehicle. And Carl Dietrich, the CEO of uh, Terrafugia, is now considering maybe moving away from fixed wing configuration to vertical takeoff, which you will see later. This is Professor Klein from Slovakia. He did uh, develop this um, aeromobile, beautiful um, design. Styling is great, and he's professor for styling in Slovakia. The first time I met him was uh, at a conference in Nice, in France. He presented his flying car, and then I asked him, Professor Klein, who is supporting you? Because development is costing a lot of money. Then he said, my wife. I said, wow, <laughs> this, this is great. I have to see what is she doing. So I did visit him uh, three years ago in Slovakia. And she is uh, in, uh, uh, in business of um, building very special um, clothing for uh, uh, movies uh, and so on. So, but he did it. It's very effective. And the biggest joke was, I told him, you are not an aeronautical engineer. How, how could you design it? So said, Branko, what is important is styling. I said, styling, excuse me, it's about a performance and so on. I said, no, 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 no. He said, styling is most important. If styling is okay, aerodynamic will be okay anyhow. So I said, great. I will miss it, visit him this year again. We'll see how he proceeded with this new development. Now, why flying cars? The only reason, I think a major reason, is to reduce travel time. If you are, this uh, graph shows nicely how much time do we have to invest, these are hours, going certain distances. 
miles, under 200, 300, 400 miles. If you are using a car going, let's say, 400 miles, then you will have to invest seven hours or so because velocity is 50, 60 miles. It takes time to get distances uh, with a car. If you will take a plane, like a commercial airplane, on a direct flight, then you will uh, walk around this blue line for a distance of 400 miles. It will take you three and a half hours. So, if you will have to fly via hub with commercial, then your travel time increases dramatically. The best opportunity, of course, is using a flying car because for very short distances you can all drive or you will drive to the airport, take off, fly, land, and proceed to find the destination on the street. And then, with flying car, this is your curve. You will be able to realize time versus distance. But as you can see, there is a break-even point around 400, 500 miles. This advantage goes away, and then airplane velocities will take over. Now, flying cars, um, this is my concept, and I do have here a small model of... Um, I hope I didn't break it. <laughs> Oh, it's okay? Yeah. Now, this is a wind tunnel model we built years ago, and we tested this uh, model in San Diego at university uh, to determine the performance in flight. As you can see, the fuselage is relatively short comparing these to uh, general aviation airplanes, uh, which means Longitudinal stability is quite critical point, but we are assuming that in the future you will have computerized uh, an aut automation flying uh, such a vehicle, and then this shouldn't be a, a problem. Yeah, okay, here we go. And uh, as you can see, all those flight components are deployed now, but I will show you how can you store all flight components inside the vehicle, which is a key to a, a good style. So, let's proceed here now. Now, the big challenge developing flying car is that you have to integrate all components you need for a car. You see, car needs all those components here, which is compartment, baggage compartment, steering wheel controls. Uh, you have to have uh, bumpers, of course. You have to have fuel tanks, engine, etc. If you have an airplane, airplane has to have those components inside of this red line, you see? But if you are developing a flying car, you must be able to integrate all components into one vehicle. And this is a nice challenge. This is a challenge. Uh, can be resolved, but the only practical way, I think, is to have deployable flight components. Now, what kind of uh, configurations could you build? This is a very generic picture. You could have a conventional takeoff and landing configurations. You could have short takeoff and landing configuration or vertical takeoff and uh, landing configuration. This is here my configuration. This is what we developed at Boeing, vertical takeoff. This is small Taylor, uh, Paul Mola, Paul Mola, and this is also Boeing configuration. So. Now, this is my flying car, the model you uh, could see here. Uh, this here shows flying car in flying mode, all components are deployed. Telescopic wing, telescopic vertical stabilizer, telescopic horizontal stabilizer, and propeller, pusher propeller is deployed too. On streets, you will retract all those components into the vehicle, and this is now your configuration on streets. Everything is retracted. Is the key, because only then you will be able to create an extremely, superbly styled car and style themselves. It's very important. Now, you can see how is this deployment working. 
those pictures and you can see uh, the cross section. Of course, um, this concept was developed years ago and I was assuming we would be using a Corvette engine up front, drivetrain to uh, rear wheels and push-up propeller which is now deployed, stored inside the vehicle. Basic configuration. Now these here are some performance uh, parameters for this uh, flying car, no detachable. It's very important that you are carrying all components you need for flying and driving all the time with you. Only then you will enjoy total freedom. You can drive or fly anywhere, anytime. So, two passenger in flight, maybe four on street. Uh, automotive engine, automotive fuel, these are velocities you can create. Of course, you can drive faster on our streets than 70 in Europe, maybe 100, 200, whatever. Guys are crazy in Germany, yeah, you can drive, you know that maybe. <laughs> and, uh, okay, uh, range uh, should be up to 400 miles. Empty weight is heavier than general aviation airplane, of course, because you have to carry all those flight components. And this is the gross weight. Now, the key to deployable and retractable components is a telescopic wing. And this here shows how does this wing work. You see wing is divided into several segments. And they are sparse, rotatable, fixed sparse, so that you can just by driving, rotating sparse, deploy and retract wings, horizontal stabilizer, and vertical stabilizer. I uh, have patents on that, and the NASA uh, supported this research two years ago. We did build models, we did stress analysis, designed everything needed to have a good engineering in place. These are components we did build to show how can a three-segment uh, telescopic wing be built. As you can see, carbon fiber skins, uh, these are kinematics, spars, front spar, rear spar, and drive kinematic in the ribs. And everything was then built integrated so that we could demonstrate to NASA and all you have to do is push a button and everything deploys. After landing, push a button again, everything is interacted. Key feature. This you show how will cockpit uh, uh, look like. You have to have all uh, pedals needed for driving and flying. And this can be nicely arranged here. This is your gas pedal and brake. And these here are those two rudder pedals. Of course, you have a wheel. This wheel will be used also for controlling uh, elevator. Uh, ailerons, of course, anyhow, by turning wheels. This is instrumentation for aircraft uh, uh, control, and this is instrumentation for uh, driving. And the rest, whatever is, needed, whatever is needed in a general aviation airplane, you will have here. Whatever is needed for driving a car, you will have here. Now, how much, can you, uh, how much time can you save having such a flying car? We did an analysis, and this here shows the Los Angeles area and many airports around Los Angeles. And we uh, calculated how much time is needed to drive on freeways from this, air, let's say, airport also to Los Angeles. As you can see, more than two hours if you will be able to fly only 35 minutes. And similar situation is here all over the place, from Riverside, from San Bernardino, and uh, Santa Ana, and other places. So, it really makes sense. Flying cars is good to, re to reduce travel time. You don't have to on streets, not on freeways, you can fly. Why is this important? Because you are saving travel time. How much travel time can you save? This is another study. They showed that for certain City pairs, this could be maybe a riverside to Long Beach, etc., etc. As you can see, you can save up to more than 1,000 hours per year using flying car for traveling the same distance instead of going on freeways. And for businessmen, time is money. Each hour you are losing is costing businessmen at least $100,000, $200,000. Uh, and this is important because they can save up to 100, 200,000 a year 
doing business and uh, losing time on streets. Uh, another another, another um, study showed that many people are making a lot of money. So which means the flying car will cost 400, maybe $500,000 for business people. This is not a big deal because it will be deducted anyhow. But uh, you can invest uh, uh, easily that much amount, uh, uh, amount of money if you are making. NASA said 5% of people in 2000 were making quasi quarter of a million bucks. Today, this number will be, I guess, 500,000. So if you are making 5,000, Are making five hundred thousand dollars per year. I hope that many of you do. Not yet. Okay, we'll talk. <laughs> will happen someday. <laughs> then you can easily buy a flying car. For business uh, people, this is an expense. Another advantage having a flying car was proven nicely a few years ago. I'm organizing those engineering sessions. And a few years ago, we had a session here in Arizona. And a colleague who was uh, scheduled to, to present something at Sweeney for this, he said, oh, I'm stuck in this generation airplane here in Arkansas, so I won't be able to make it. I said, ah, it's interesting, Ed. But if you would have a flying car, what you could do, because he, he was only a VFR pilot, didn't have IFR uh, license, then uh, this, this year shows areas of rain and bad weather, and this year too. And I told him, oh, it's so bad. With flying car, you could simply be driving here. You will take off here, will fly. You will land here, you will drive here. You will take off here, will fly. And you could make it to uh, Arizona in 13 hours, in one day. The Joint Aviation Airplanes, you cannot, you are stuck. And this is the biggest disadvantage with general aviation airplanes are really not very useful for day-to-day -day activities. So flying cars is a different story. Now, what kind of businesses um, are of interest? Uh, why is flying car business very interesting for industry? I compared here, let's say, um, several criteria here uh, for automobile, for cars, and for public um, uh, commercial aviation. Now, as far as cost goes, I hope that everybody here knows that if you are driving your car, you are paying for each mile at least 30 pennies per mile, up to one hour. Do you know that this is your cost you, uh, you have to pay? Did you realize that? Who did realize that? So please show me your hand. It's interesting because people are simply not calculating all costs. How much fuel, insurance, and the rest I have to pay taxes to be able to drive. Maybe you are driving maximum 10,000 miles per year or even less. However, if you are flying today, if you are buying cheap tickets, Sometimes you will pay only three cents a mile flying. It's amazing. So you could easily uh, say, why are people driving cars? It's much too expensive. It's ten times more expensive. They should be uh, just fine. The reason is you own your car. You are in charge. You can drive to any place, anytime you want. You decide, not somebody else, like general aviation uh, companies. Now, another thing is, uh, what about business fluctuation? In the recession, during the recession, sales for cars will drop maybe 20%. For example, it's once 20%. For commercial aviation, we at Boeing, we are not selling up one plane during a recession, even worse. Guys are giving us airplanes back during the recession. Of course, during the good times, we are selling car crazy. But the point is fluctuation, business fluctuation here for airplanes is plus minus 100%. Not so good for the business or sustaining business. So travel time, of course, you have to invest a lot of time using a car, much less by uh, using an airplane. 
<laughs> and flexibility is so important. We are such individuals, we want to control our destiny ourselves. Uh, you can do this with car, not that much with commercial airplanes. So, which means flying car industry will be able to enjoy these advantages. Very low uh, business fluctuation, offering very large travel time reduction and offering total flexibility to customers. So. Now, as I showed you, to integrate all those components you need for flying and driving into one flying car is a real challenge. You must do real good engineering. I know that because I'm doing this for decades now. And I believe I now at the point where I know precisely what to do, how to do it, and how can such a configuration be successful. But I did ask years ago FAA regulation uh, folks, tell me what else do I have to do to get certification for my flying car? And they said, first of all, there's this standard FAR 25 certification rule. You have to uh, follow this anyhow because it's for general aviation airplanes. In addition, they said there are 14 points you have to prove to us. And those are like telescopic beam structural rigidity, uh, dynamic, elasticity, uh, uh, stability in flight, etc., etc., and controls. Several criteria which have to be fulfilled for this type of uh, uh, flying car configuration. Where is the market? This here chart shows how many miles are we traveling these days using cars. And this here shows simply vehicle velocity. You cannot drive faster with a car than 65. It's not legal. Don't drive 80 miles per hour. 65 is your limitation. And we are driving billions of miles every year using this motor transportation. If you are using airplanes, yes, you can create much higher velocities, but you are uh, traveling much less. And I think there's a huge gap between what cars can offer to you and what uh, commercial aviation can offer to you. This area here is something, is a huge market place for flying cars. Because you can generate velocities as uh, automobiles can, but you can also fill this velocity gap up to commercial aviation. So, great market opportunities for future industries. So, this is my flying car model. I do have also a quarter scale model. I did uh, build it so that we could show how does deployment of all components just by pushing a button work and retracting everything. I do have it in my home, but it's huge, heavy. I couldn't bring it here. <laughs> but okay, we can look at this uh, wind tunnel model. This is a more advanced rendering of my um, flying car in uh, flight, uh, flying mode on ground. And first time I showed this to another, they said, oh, fantastic, we love it. This is really, this will help you to be successful uh, as far business goes on self. And this is now flying car uh, in flight. So this uh, was a live slide, and uh, if you do have any questions or remarks, uh, please do so. Otherwise, we will, yeah, please, yeah? How do you power the propeller? Do you have a drive shaft, or electric motor, or what? Yeah, good point. Uh, yes, my configuration, uh, because it was created years ago, shows drive shaft to the back, and then geared up to the propeller. But uh, in the future, because at the moment there's heavy push to electric propulsion using batteries or hybrid systems, yes, uh, I'm planning to uh, recalculate everything and redesign everything for electric propulsion to show how would this work or hybrid uh, uh, propulsion. So, yes. Yeah, madam? Good question. Should be a uh, high octane automotive fuel because I was planning uh, to use Corvette engine and NASA did uh, uh, test Corvette engine years ago to be used for general aviation uh, application and then they said 
Uh, we talked about that because I said, this is an ideal engine for flying cars. They said, yes, we can use it, yeah. Yeah, so? Is there a hand throttle? If you have your rudders, yeah. and you're flying, yes. and you have to change your speed, you have to have a hand throttle, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yes, of course. Uh, I would say you will have hand throttle for uh, engine power, yes, like you have in general aviation airplanes. But also, in addition, pedal for driving the car. So, uh, my philosophy was, let's not confuse pilots, don't confuse uh, drivers. Everybody should uh, find whatever he is used to in this flying car. Yes, both. Yeah, Madam? Uh, as far, uh, yeah, you will need a uh, PPL uh, pilot license, yes, definitely, yes, and a driver license, yes. But uh, in the future, which we are also working on now heavily, as soon as autonomy will become a reality, then you will not have to have a pilot license. But this is far in the future. And it's interesting because uh, I attended a conf NASA conference in uh, Atlanta years ago, and then next to me was a professor, and then your presentation here jumped in and said, guys, in the future we will have no pilots. I said, how, how come? I said, oh, yes. So we will have autonomy so that grandma from Pasadena will sit into her vehicle, will push the button A to B, go, done, nothing else. Everything's autonomous on streets and in flight. And you know, uh, just one or two years ago, everybody started developing autonomous cars. Google, Apple, everybody. And in a few years, and this was pushing automotive industry into autonomy too. And they are telling us in a few years, every, everybody will have autonomous cars. Autonomy in street is much more difficult than in flight. Because on the ground you have to have sensors to watch for people, dogs, trees, cars, everything. And you have to have very sophisticated software to analyze and to make right decisions. In air, it's nothing. It's free air. All you have to do is watch maybe for some, a few airplanes somewhere. It's much easier to do autonomy in flight than on ground. And it's interesting. Um, I was uh, with Boeing, of course, I was pushing Boeing to get involved in flying cars, it's clear. <laughs> and we did all kinds of studies with flying cars. And I remember last year we had a meeting uh, with uh, our VP and uh, we were debating you know, the future and uh, aviation and so on. And then he said, as soon autonomy will become a reality, this flying car business will explode. And it's clear because uh, today are all those problems, all oh, driver license, all oh, certification and so on. If with autonomy, uh, all those problems go quasi away. But, and I believe this will be huge in the sea for the future. In my opinion, no question about it. Yeah. How do you take it off since you can't really rotate? Or take Very good point. Uh, right, because general aviation airplanes, this is main gear, and we are rotating around the main gear. I have four wheels, I can't rotate, but what I'm doing, I'm deploying wheels anyhow, at least one and a half feet above the ground, and acce accelerate, and during the takeoff, I'm pulling aileron, and with that, I'm also pulling in the rear wheel, and I can put airplane into 90 degrees of freedom for takeoff, angle of attack, and then I can take off. But it's a good question, yes. Good observation. Yeah, so? The old air they didn't have rudder pedals. And I guess the biggest trade-off is you cannot can't sideslip there. Yeah. If, if, the, if the computer's going to, if there's going to be a computer-controlled flight, Good question, yeah, yeah. good aeronautical uh, problem. For now, I decided to try to use all techniques in flight uh, procedures as we have it in general aviation airplanes. But all those 
improvements in the future are quite possible having computer growth. Oscar, please. The Air crew had letters yeah. that were coupled to the aileron plane wheel. The only thing you didn't have was rudder headings, that's right. Uh -huh. so yeah. It's a possible alternative, yes. Yeah. What do you see for a typical cruising altitude? I don't have any uh -huh. Right. It's no, in my opinion, it's no need to go to 10,000 feet if you're going only 200 miles. Uh, uh, but you will have to go at least 2,000 uh, feet for sure. Two to 5,000, something. And I think in the future, there will be anyhow flight corridors. And it's interesting, many years ago, 30 years ago, NASA had an excellent general aviation research and they were creating uh, high waist in the sky techniques, and they predicted that in the future, German aviation airplane or flying cars will fly along fly corridors, it's all automated and so on. And of course, you don't have to fly too high, uh, I agree, because you're not flying too far. So? Is there an aspect ratio at which the telescopic spar becomes weight uh, Aspect ratio is roughly five something, yes. And telescopic structure, of course, is added weight, no question about it, is kinematic, because those spars are really kinematic components, because are serving two functions. Spars are loading main loads, air loads, of course, but also is being used for a kinematic deploying and retracting all components. It's very complex design. There are fixed spars, rotatable, fixed rotatable. You have to rotate left hand, right hand, and so on. It's all part of this uh, yeah, pattern and invention. Yes, but uh, it's adding weight, no question about complexity. has to be designed and engineered properly, and then it, it works. So did you show your sample? You show your oh, yeah, OK. I do have here a very small example of these flight components. You see, this is rapid prototyping, great machines today. You can simply create a CAD design, put CAD design into your machine, and overnight, machine will grow, components, without any fabrication and assembly. You see, here. I did build this to show you roughly how does this telescopic structure work. You see, there are skins, and there are spars here inside. And young men, if you are so interested, so maybe you, you should uh, look at. I do have here half-scale, three segment wing components, uh, just demonstrating that because this is the most important feature for uh, my flying cars at this time. Uh, this, yeah? Would you still need a runway to take off? Yes, yes. Um, I would say condition for flying car are the same as for generation airplane, yes. And it's a good question because we always have a runway and we just have a your takeoff. But we had in our country 17,000 airfields and NASA is so unhappy because people are underutilizing those fields and airfields are being closed down, closed down, also here around the river section. So, and uh, it's not a, a big deal. A flying car will take you from door to door. You will start at home, will drive to the airport, then you will fly, and you will drive again to find the destination. I think it's a, gr a great transportation uh, vehicle, yeah. So at what speed would you rotate it? Uh, at takeoff speed would be around uh, 90 miles per hour. It always depends how much in, uh, engine power did you invest. And flying cars will have as much engine power as sports car today. Today, almost every car has 300 horsepower, 400 is nothing, it's amazing. In general aviation airplanes, it's only 120, 180 horsepower, period. It's very optimized. But I would say with flying cars, because it's also higher weight, and so yes, we will use automotive engine power. It's much more than general aviation, yes. Sorry? Did you say 90 miles an hour? 19. 19? Yeah. No, 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 90. 90 for takeoff. For takeoff, yes. Takeoff, you will fly 120 something. Yeah? Yeah, sir? 
No, no. Soul speed will be 60. Roughly. 60. 60. Six yeah. Young man? No? Okay. <laughs> so, any other questions or remarks? If not, then uh, let's uh, go to a few uh, uh, videos. First one, so, okay. First one will be uh, from, uh, we'll show Mort Taylor uh, uh, flying car. He is really father of uh, uh, flying car uh, uh, effort. And it's really by his flying car and was flying it for many years and we will show you uh, we will show you only half of uh, I think his presentation you see this is his flying car yeah okay yeah, you see what's interesting and John the airport he didn't bring it in this trailer you have to take it out you have to reassemble wings it takes uh, Almost one hour to have wings and everything you catch and you can take off. Looks very nice, very nice car on streets, yes. But it's really not very practical. Uh, it's tough to, yeah, you see? Then uh, on street you will then attach those wings, vertical orientation, propeller. And then I said, I talked to Mark Taylor years ago and said, to, you know, at it's not a good idea to have those uh, large surfaces uh, exposed. Side wind and streets will blow you off. He said, yeah, Mongo, you're right, it happened to me. <laughs> I said, but you know, you have to think about it. To, to do good engineering will mean to avoid those problems. Very nice innovation. I'm very appreciative of uh, him. And this was built in 46. I imagine it was a, a long time ago. And, uh, yeah, then after wings are assembled, you can take off. Um, maybe we should move ahead. Okay, show, shows information very conventional, like the generation airplanes. Okay, and then this should do it. So maybe let's go to the next one. The next one is uh, how molas, yeah, how mola, yeah, this is interesting, yeah. This video is uh, at least 10 years old now, but fine. Yeah, the most expensive business because it's not a single product. If you're, you know, selling something, some new gadget or gadget, you know, just find a way to manufacture it like I did on mufflers. But this is a system. It, it, you're dealing with so many different components and you're dealing with skilled people well beyond my uh, talents because you need people that are really good in software. But, both hardware and a lot, electronic hardware and electronic software and stuff like that. So you end up with quite a team of people. I had 35 engineers working for me at one point. Four engineers. You can imagine what that costs. I've never been interested in, you know, lumbering down a runway and taking off. If I can't take off like a hummingbird, I'll, I'll stay on the ground. I'm glad I didn't because I'm, I'm clearly not detailed enough in the way I live my life. I'm, as I think people have heard, I've so heard more able to fly 300 miles. One thing or another, and it's, it's because I'm this a Wankel Motors, a reckless, two PNSL. Multiple that way, if you want to call me that kind of thing. But it risk takers off, risk taking can get you in a lot of trouble. Yes. So I'm lucky. Okay, so if, I, if I become a he did invest more than 20 million dollars into all this development. Yeah, this is the first takeoff that flight, but anyhow, he demonstrated what he'll take off. Which is fine. We had Boeing studied that and uh, we were trying to assess how much will it cost to develop this so full scale production unit, but you're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So, because we do have experience with V22, it costs us a billion plus and NASA on top of it and so on. It's very tricky technology. I would never, because it's so expensive, so as a provider private man attacked such a problem, but he was courageous enough to do it. Okay, next one is then with... Um, oh, yeah, this is LV. This is a motorbike, flying motorbike, but it's using... Uh, no, it's on street. Very soon he will deploy his uh, propeller. Uh, this is uh, 
gyrocopter. What is the gyrocopter? You see, now he's deploying uh, uh, two blade um, propeller, which helps him as soon as he will start moving horizontally, uh, then propeller will start rotating, will create lift, and then it can take off in no time. Very interesting pro uh, pusher propeller with foldable blades. As you can see now, very soon he will be able to create enough lift and then it will take off. Uh, this is a robot, I talk, a robot in Holland. This, by the way, our guys in Holland uh, developed this stuff. Last year they started production and uh, they are um, telling me that uh, cost will be around 600,000 euros and they are um, trying to get uh, police and military involved uh, and also if a uh, product that people can buy too. They talked to us at Boeing, um, but uh, I'm not so sure if uh, uh, this type of vehicle is very small market niche would be something for a large uh, company like Boeing. So, but it's very interesting concept. It's real. It flies, uh, drives. It's just uh, uh, excellent engineering, I would say. Yes. Okay, this was Wipel in Holland, Netherlands. See, he has to. Yeah. Now he's demonstrating fly, uh, driving on street at high velocities, like 120 miles. Yeah, it's quite stable motorbike, you could say. And maybe you should do it, uh, Paul. So let's uh, close it. Let's go to the next one. And this one will show, oh, most beautiful flying car, Aeromobile. Uh, designed and built by Professor Klein in Slovakia. I visited him two years ago. He was a man uh, who said, my wife is paying for the development. Yeah. It's a beautifully styled uh, flying car, swift wings, as you can see. And uh, it's a uh, pusher propeller, engine in the back. It's a new reality. It's a revolutionary solution which will change the personal transportation on a global scale. Uh, just to get from A to B, from door to door, uh, it takes a lot of time. This will solve a lot of current problems. The company was founded in 2010, uh, seven years ago, when the flying car found still uh, a lot of uh, science fiction. We already built Deploying. two previous prototypes, which was actually flown and uh, red side, uh, red side. Like on, a, on a street and in the air. Uh, the vehicle uh, behind me represents the first commercial vehicle. We start to take three orders for the first vehicle. In the first vehicle is in 2020. It's shown in Europe, Europe, all over the place: England, Austria, Germany, Slovakia, Italy. Great stuff. Cost is uh, quite high. They are predicting that uh, one. Uh, we are certifying the vehicle. Flying cab will cost 1.5 million. And uh, the next one will be of course. Two seater. And then the Asian certification. Oh. You can drive uh, on streets at uh, car speeds, yeah, high velocity. And the electric configuration is in. This was the first prototype. Next, F3. To offer a flying car with a regular transportation mode as a service. So let's call it mobility as a service or transportation as a service. So you don't need to own it. You will have just an access uh, to the vehicle and you can run it as a flying Uber. I will visit him in June in Slovakia to see how he's progressing with this new model. Okay, yeah, this was on uh, many TV channels from CNN to NBC and so on. Uh, okay, next one is uh, Ah, Lilium, Lilium. Uh, this uh, is interesting. Three students, a few students in Germany, in Munich, at University of Nautical Engineering, guys, a few years ago, they decided so let's. Video, we are developing the world's okay. first Good entirely time. electric vertical takeoff and landing jet. Interesting. Multiple propellers. This is electric propulsion. We want to establish and build a new means of transportation. 
and the Dengeki, multiple drive systems. Although you're there. working on it every day, you still got these moments where you think, wow. They are up to 12 propellers. Really Fans blowing the flaps, blowing flaps. To be actually you see, flaps are really developed, deployed to 90 degrees, and blowing those flaps, you can create virtual lift. And there was one uh, flight uh, demonstration. Uh, here we go. Large wing. And this is canard wing here. So Same principle. An airplane that takes off vertically. It has up to 20 of those vents blowing flaps. Over the takeoff. This is full scale the real flying propeller. You see? With wing borne lift. Principle. And this way I was really surprised speed seeing that. that but also higher speeds than in a helicopter. So connectivity is what it's all about. Yeah. That's really now four-seater, this was a two-seater, and they are planning to be on the market in two years. All electric proportion. Okay, next one, Lilium. I was trying to get them into my session. Uh, in uh, Dallas last year, but they were so busy they could make it. Next one, ah, Volocopter, also Germany. Uh, these guys decided to use up to 12 or 16 vans. This is more or less a drone. And this is a real prototype. Uh, there's a pilot in it, flying it. This is by demonstration, you see, okay. And multiple propellers and uh, electric propulsion, of course. And the philosophy here is there are so many propellers will, will, if one or two fails, doesn't matter. There are enough, there's enough fail safe to land safely. Okay. Five minutes. Okay, next. Yeah. They also been, uh, they will be in Dubai. In Dubai, they will establish first uh, passenger transportation. Now, this is Terrafugia, but the new configuration. The Terrafugia with those folding wings you saw is still there, but at the moment, everybody is pushing so heavily for what we are take off in the latest proportion. So, Carl Dietrich, CEO of the company in Boston, decided that uh, he is just rendering, nothing else. It's not real. It's just simulating how could this work. And uh, uh, these are MIT students. I, they are always uh, part of my uh, SE flying car sessions presenting this now. This guy's work. And then, uh, as you will see, he is deploying two uh, propellers for vertical takeoff and for mainly for vertical takeoff. Hold it down. And we have a booster propeller too for horizontal fire. It's just an idea and uh, Sadly enough, company was just sold end of last year to China. Chinese are buying all kinds of technologies and small companies here. But, uh, okay, he needed uh, research money. I talked to him uh, and then he said, okay, we cannot survive without getting bought by Chinese companies. So, which is uh, now also, this company bought Volvo and another uh, European company. So, vertical landing. on heliport somewhere on top of the building and then you will retract propellers and right away. Okay. Nice styling, but we'll see. Development won't be easy. Next one is... Uh, 
Airbus unveils its self-flying Uber. Ah, taxi. Airbus. The man is set to take so, the skies next to so funny. 30 years ago, Lars invited me to Langley. We talked about flying cars. And I said, Bruce, the best thing we can do is give us money. We will build a prototype to show the world how it works. And then you always say, Bronco, don't worry. It's all on my radar screen. After years and years, the budgets were gone. NASA shut down everything. Didn't happen. But then he said, oh, what would be good if European was started developing flying cars. Then we will wake up. Then we will do it. I said, you know, really shame. Last year, last year, big announcement. Airbus is developing flying cars. I was so shocked. I did send this article to NASA friends, Bruce, all of top managers. I said, you know, guys, it's really shame. These are our ideas. We know what to do. And Competition will do, will show it now, uh, how uh, we can do it. And then, uh, yeah, one top manager, Mark Moore, was so disappointed. He said, sent me an email, said, Branko, I'm done with NASA. I'm quitting tomorrow. And he joined Uber. He is now director of uh, aviation at Uber. So to help supporting this idea, electric proportion, what we are take of flying cars and so on. Yeah, this is Report CNN money. And they said we will have they will fly this configuration this year. And this is philosophy what and how and why and all over the place. Yeah, it's interesting. At the moment, focus is just on vertical takeoff, vertical landing, electric propulsion, or maybe hybrid propulsion and batteries. So, it will take, I think, several years before guys will then rediscover opportunities for flying cars. And what's so funny, last year, uh, last week, I, uh, I was in Florida at the uh, NASA, uh, no, AIA, AIAA conference, and there was a huge session. The topic of the session was, dude, where's my flying car? There were 800 people in this room. There was discussion that, oh, why did we build flying car? Oh no, we will build what we are take off, electric propulsion, da da da. And no, is it a flying car? No, maybe we are talking about what you are take of safe, uh, ta -da, reliable, autonomous, ta -da, everything. So I am thinking that uh, in a few years we will rediscover this idea that flying car using existing infrastructure, roads and airports is a good idea and guys will put more money behind it and develop it. And we have to do it right because my philosophy is, my friend sometimes said, oh, Rafael, I just buy a sport car, put a wink on it and we'll have a flying car. I said, no, you have to start with clean sheet of paper because everything has to be lightweight, carbon fiber, materials, etc. has to be right. And I said, we have to do it right or we have to wait until time is right to do it right. And this is very hard to Yeah, I think the, was this the last? Uh, uh, no, we do have U Uber. Let's go to the next one. We do have Uber also. I'll show you what Uber is planning. Uber is uh, very nice. It's a large uh, company now, $17 billion, uh, $7 billion, uh, in assets, yeah. But they are just uh, creating infrastructure, bringing customers and car owners together. Oh, this is, by the way, one flying jeep developed by, in Israel. But interesting, because in Russia there are two uh, vans for vertical takeoff and two vans for horizontal flight. A very interesting development. It started more than 10 years ago, but then guys uh, were able to demonstrate a real prototype in flight. This is it. And then uh, let's go to the next one, which should be Uber, I think. Oh, quite interesting. It's very nice to see that guys succeeded to, to do it. So, and uh, okay, you may think flying cars go. are a fantasy of the future, but reality is catching up fast. The ride sharing service Uber wants to use Dallas as a launching pad for an airborne taxi service. Cross with James Rose of downtown Dallas with more on this plan. It is really ambitious, James. Very ambitious and pretty exciting, too. You know, there's still a lot of work that has to be done before we start seeing cars flying around in downtown Dallas. 
But the experts at Uber that are working on this say once it's up and running, they'll be as easy to order as it is to order a car with the Uber app. We've gone north, we've gone south, we've gone east and west. Let's go vertical. And I am so proud that Dallas has been chosen uh, as the initial market of Uber Elevate. The first market to test with a car. Yeah, see, like they are playing with this multiple vents. Like the idea is having so many vents uh, and electric motors. I think it is a safe, uh, uh, safe is much more improved. efficient mode of transportation that is both safe, reliable, affordable, and something that we never thought would take place unless you believe that the uh, the cartoon yeah. showed the Jetsons, Jetsons would yeah. actually happen. The project is called Uber Elevator. The test flights are scheduled to begin yeah. in 2020 point point. in both Dallas and in the city of Dubai. From Heliport to Heliport. Well, it may sound far-fetched, the aviation director of engineering at Uber Technologies says it's all possible systems. because of an amazing convergence of technology. I just came from 32 years at Mark Moore. This is a man, another man who went to Uber. No. Autonomy, My friend. Propulsion, all sorts of advanced sensors that are all coming together to create this great new capability in these new aircraft. Billionaire developer Ross Perot Jr. has partnered with Uber to build the vertical launch pads in Dallas. I think uh, people are going to be surprised with just how quickly this evolves. Um, but that's the Uber way. And if you think back seven years ago, Uber was just starting up. Now Uber is a $60 billion company operating in 500 cities with over 2 million partner drivers. Uh, in 1960s, we all saw that going on and imagine that I'm the mayor of a city that this is going to take place in is a remarkable day. Well, I mean, as you know, no one can tell how expensive these things are going to be, but the bottom line, the engineers say they will be far less expensive than helicopters. They'll also be more efficient, and they will be much, much quieter. That's one of the big things they're concerned about when they start flying cars around in the inner city. What would George Jetson say? All right, James, thank you. So... I think this was it. Yes. Yeah, this was the last. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this was the last uh, last video. Uh, if you have any remarks, questions, please. Otherwise. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.